Well, one moment, Darren Turner's mind wandered to the dozens of men wounded and killed while he was deployed in Iraq. The next moment, Darren had his kids begging him to go to the park and play. As an Army chaplain, Darren was a strong anchor of faith for his fellow soldiers, but he struggled to do the same at home. Darren Turner and his wife Heather had no idea how the war in Iraq would shake their rock-solid marriage to its core. In 2007, Darren, a Regent University grad, spent 15 months as an Army chaplain, encouraging servicemen and women in their faith. But when he came home, things quickly fell apart. I began to snap at, at little things, and uh, it didn't matter if she was right or wrong. That wasn't the point. It was an opportunity for me to uh, let some of my anger and frustration out. I knew something deeper, supernatural, that we could not manufacture had to happen or else this was going to go nowhere. It was going to get worse. Darren and Heather's story hits the big screen in the movie Indivisible, playing in theaters starting October 26th. And the movie's amazing. Well, Darren and Heather Turner, the real Darren and Heather Turner, are with us now. And welcome to the 700 Club, guys. Thank you for, having, for having us. Wow, it's so it's weird be because I just, you know, saw the movie last night. I got finished watching it at midnight, and then they have the real, the pictures of the real family come on afterward. And so now here you are. Here are. Um, Darren, you were, you had several tours of duty over in Iraq. What was... The one depicted in the movie was your first tour, Correct. which was in incredible. What can you even tell us? What was that like for you? Yeah, so I actually went to seminary here. I was a regent student, uh, graduated 2006, and then went on active duty the beginning of 2007. Deployed for 15 months, three months after my first day on active duty. Wow. So it was fast. It was uh, part of. President Bush's surge, if yeah. you recall that, oh, yeah. back in 2007 and 8. Mm -hmm. um, and so we went to Iraq for 15 months. And I remember in the movie, it's like, we're called to this, where you, you know, you were going to just take it on. Mm -hmm. um, and you get over there and it was, it was totally not what you expected, or worse than you expected. Yeah, I'm not sure I expected. I, I, I had no idea what to expect, honestly. I knew we were going to go um, into a pretty hot combat zone, and it, was, uh, and it, it was. was pretty wild, yeah. And you ended up ministering to some soldiers who ended up losing their lives, and that really affected you. It did. And Heather, um, you're home raising three kids, and you guys are communicating a lot, and at first it's, it's, everything seems fine, but then you start to notice he's not sounding like himself anymore. What was going on with you? I think for me, I just wanted to be able to connect to him in a way that I felt like he was heard and I was heard. But there's just, you know, practical issues. Back then during the deployments, um, you did just get your two-minute phone call and there was this long delay. And, and so we would get off the phone feeling like we hadn't really said anything to each other. Two minutes. Oh, I didn't realize it was only that's that's tough. That's really tough. Before Sky, before smartphones, they had call centers at some of these deployed locations. Oh, man. And you had a limited amount of time. Wow. Well, at least you called. Yeah. Guys, just, <laughs> guys just text today. Right. Yeah. But, um, so when he got home after, it was 15 months, 15 right? 15 months. He wasn't the same man. Heather, what, how did that make you feel? What was going on? Yeah, he, neither of us were, were the same people. You know, you change anyway over uh, that period of time, but... Having been in stressful situations just compounded that problem. And so he came back, and I, the same thing, I didn't really have an expectation. I didn't know what to expect, but I did expect that at least we would come back and be glad to see each other and, yeah. you know, sort of reconnect in a way. Um, but he was angry. Yes, he was just angry and disconnected. And Darren, why do you think you were taking your frustrations out on, on Heather? That's the million dollar question. <laughs> uh, I, I, as you mentioned, it was a tough deployment. I lost a lot of guys. She was there with the family. So I didn't fully appreciate what she had gone through on sure. that deployment. I only saw what I saw mm -hmm. and vice versa. You didn't fully appreciate what, what happened with us. And so we came back feeling almost competitive, like we both had a better story than the other one. And, and that, wow. that kind of fueled that anger a little bit. Sure. And the kids, they're caught in the crossfires. Yeah. How, how are they coping during this time? 
Well, you, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, Ellie, I remember, and we have pictures where she actually pulled her all of her eyelashes out, oh. and, and not consciously, she would not know that she had done it. But we have pictures where, I mean, she literally is missing all of her eyelashes, mm -hmm. and she would say if you asked her, you know, that she was fine. But clearly, there's a stress, and yeah. she was the daughter who has the asthma, right? Yes. And that was depicted so beautifully in the movie and brings you to tears. And I. That little actress was amazing. I loved her. Um, you two actually separated for a little while after yeah. you got back. You'd already been separated for 15 months, <laughs> and then you get separated. Did that help or hurt? Well, that's for us, it was God's. Uh, that was God working in us. We uh, had looked to each other for answers, and neither of us had answers. We were both empty, yeah. and so it took a season of being in the desert. Uh, almost like Gomer and Hosea, where I had to go far away to really figure out what was going on in me and so that I could come back to Heather and offer her something instead of trying to take something. And Darren, what was the turning point? So uh, one afternoon, um, I took the kids to meet Heather, and uh, that was the first time in like a public setting where we were, we were separated. Right. And so that was the first <laughs> time I had to like release the kids. I stayed back and they ran to mom and then I turned around and got in the car and left. And so just the weight, the gravity of that situation finally slapped me in the face and, and woke me up, so to speak. And, and from there, I was, I was ready to fight for my family. And that's when I got, I had to get out of the army to do that. Wow. Um, the Army wanted me to stay in, but I knew that I needed time and space outside of that if I was going to have a fighting chance to win, win my wife's heart back and the kids. And Heather, how did you learn to trust Darren again? Because he had, you know, completely changed. And I guess what you didn't realize was that he was feeling guilty for not being able to save the men. At least that's what's depicted in the movie. Right. Um, but how did you learn to trust him again? I think for me, it was uh, less about learning how to trust Darren and more about learning how to trust the Lord mm -hmm. in difficult uh, situations. And so for me, it was more of um, the Lord really just kind of re re revealing His will to me for marriage and that if He's for marriage, you know, who can, how can we undo what God has, mm -hmm. has put into plan. And so for me, it was just an obedient choice to follow what the Lord's will was and trust that God was going to uh, keep me in his will and bless my children um, out of an obedient decision to stay married. And, and eventually my emotions caught up to that, right. but it did take some time. So many military families go through divorce. Now you counsel military families What's the number one thing that you tell them when they're in the situation that you guys were in? Yeah, and uh, I, my counsel to them is, and I don't understand every couple's situation. They're so drastically different. Sure. But the common denominator is one or both want out. Mm -hmm. And so just one more day, one more day. Let's keep talking about this. Let's create some space for God to break your heart for your family instead of uh, you chasing after other things and deciding that this is the best thing to do is leave your family. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. Well, your story is now headed to the big screen. It's called Indivisible. It is a powerful movie. I loved it. I did cry a few times. <laughs> um, and I love that. Um, well, I love so much about it. it uh, ha we don't have time to talk too much about the movie, but it comes out when? October 26th, October just 26. in a couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah. Indivisible theaters across the country. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Go to indivisiblemovie.com and you can type in your uh, zip code and it'll pop up the closest theaters to you. I really think it's a right now movie and it's a great movie for military and anybody, any, anybody, anyone to see. Yeah. Um, thanks for sharing your story Thank with you. us and uh, with the world. Uh, for more information, you can go to cdn.com. Again, Darren, Heather, thanks. God bless Thank you guys. You. Appreciate it.